Okay, our last section for chapter three is finally looking at rational functions. So these are functions in the form um, that look like a fraction. Um, so it'll be p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomials. Um, the domain will be all real numbers except when q of x is zero, right? And that's because denominators can't be zero. So rational functions might look like x plus one over x cubed plus x squared. I don't know, plus three, those are both polynomials, right? And it makes a rational function. One over x is also a rational function. One and x are just very simple polynomials. Um, what's not a rational function would be like a square root of x over x squared plus one. So these are special cases where the top and bottom are polynomials on their own. So we're gonna get into graphs this section. We just have to go over a couple things before we start graphing. So we're still going to look at intercepts, symmetry, transformations. Um, but some new things we want to consider is the domain's going to be more important. There's right polynomials. There were no domain issues. Um, and we need to look at the degrees of the polynomials. That'll tell us some um, special characteristics. Um, so let's define, before we define asymptotes, let's just look at an example. So we have the graph. We're going to um, look at 1 over uh, x minus 2. So that's the graph of 1 over x. And then what, we shift to the right by 2. So right now it can't equal 0, but in this new version it can't equal 2. And it makes that same shape. So let's see what happens um, near 2 and as x gets really large. So what happens is x gets really large. Um, I did an absolute value because that large could go to infinity or negative infinity. So infinity could be like really, really big numbers. So like 1,000 or 10,000. Um, and then I did absolute value because we might look at negative infinity. Let's look at really big negative numbers. Negative 1,000, negative 10,000. And then let's see what the function is doing. Yeah. All right. So we have 1 over, and then if you do parentheses, you can do this all at once, 10,000 minus 2. And we get 1 e to the negative 4, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, four decimal places. So really small numbers. Let's do... T uh, Oh, that was 10,000. I already did 10,000 on accident. So it was 0, 0, 0, 1. Let's do 1,000. And we get 0, 0, 0.001. If you wanted to go bigger, like 10,000, 100,000. Right, we're getting really small numbers with those e's to the negative 5s. What happens at negative 1,000? So 1 over negative 1,000 minus 2. So that's um, negative 0 0.000, and then 9 takes the 4 spot. That's what those negative, those e's to the negative 4s mean. And then let's do negative 10,000. We'll make sense of this in a second. We get negative 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 9 is in the 5th spot for the negative 5. 9998. Um, but the main idea is what's happening. These numbers are getting small, so I think they're going to zero. Going to zero. And that's why the graph gets flat towards zero. So that's going to create asymptotes when we define them. And then what happens near two, right? We probably learned that two is an asymptote as well, but let's look what happens in terms of a table. So as I go to 2, I could do like 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, right? I could also approach 2 from the other side, as from this side, 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. So that's what I mean by near 2. Um, this might not be your favorite version of this. Um, if you, Some of us might prefer to look at graphs. Some of us might just prefer the definitions. Um, but this is one way to kind of start to understand what asymptotes are. So I'm just going to type them all in, and then I'll write them down. So 
I'm just plugging in 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999 minus 2. So to me, these are getting bigger and bigger, but negative. So what do we think they're going to? Negative infinity, maybe? If you're not convinced, do one with a lot of nines. All right, we can go even closer to two. And we're getting really, really big numbers. Let's check out the other side. So 2.1, we get 2.01, because I'm trying to get closer to two. Yeah, and then we get... 2.001. Oops, made a typo. Yeah, and so these are getting bigger but positive. So maybe these ones are going to infinity. Um, so that's the table version. If you want to look at the graph, right, on the left side, it's going to negative infinity. On the right side, it's going to positive infinity. Um, but this will be important for us for finding asymptotes. Um, by understanding that things are going to infinity. Um, so let's formally define asymptotes. If you hated the table version, here's a new version. So let's formally define these and then we'll do examples in a little bit. So let's do some notation. I kept writing those arrows as a way of saying something is approaching a number. So x is approaching a and the negative symbol tells me it's from the left. So it's not saying it's approaching negative a, it's saying it's approaching from the left. If I put a positive sign, it means it's approaching from the right. So in this previous example, this first table would be two from the left and the second table would have been two from the right. And then sometimes we just look at a overall, and that means we're looking at both the left and the right side if we don't put the positive or negative sign on it. So just some new notation. And then approaching infinity um, actually means like it's getting really big. Um, so approaching negative infinity means it becomes unbounded in the negative direction. Unbounded just means it keeps going and going. And positive infinity would be unbounded in the positive direction. So that's the notation. Um, and we'll use this notation to define asymptotes, and then we'll do examples in the next video. So vertical asymptotes, we've probably covered all these asymptotes, but maybe not with this notation. Vertical asymptotes are anytime the y value is going to infinity. So it could be f of x goes to negative infinity or positive infinity as x approaches a number. So as long as one of these is satisfied, then we'll have an asymptote at x equals a. The idea is, is here's x equals a. The graph will approach infinity, right? It could approach infinity from both sides. It might only approach negative infinity on one side, but it doesn't cross the asymptote, right? It never cross, we can actually never cross a vertical asymptote. The function is just getting really, really close to it as it goes really, gets really big or really small in the negative direction, right? It's approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity. And the graph will be discontinuous at A. We'll talk about how to find these shortly. Um, so those are when y values approach infinity. Um, so then horizontal asymptotes are the opposite. They're when x approaches infinity. So the function will approach a number as x goes to infinity. Uh, so functions can have at most two, but rational functions will only have one. So there are functions that have two at horizontal asymptotes, but not rational, so we won't see that right now. So there are functions that look like this, but this is not a rational function. So I'm going to erase it because we're not covering that now. So rational functions will only have one, but those are the ones that go this way, y equals c, and then the graph gets close to the asymptote. And these ones you can actually cross. So sometimes you have graphs that look like that. So maybe it crosses it, but it approaches it at the end. It's all about end behavior. So it's actually okay to cross these. Um, we'll never ever cross the vertical ones though. 
And then the last case is a slant asymptote, which we may have never seen before. Um, it's when the function approaches a line. So it'll make more sense when we do examples, but we'll have some sort of line. And then maybe our graph does something like this. So it flattens out as a line rather than horizontal. So it's a similar idea as a horizontal asymptote. but it's approaching a line rather than a horizontal line. So x is still going to infinity or negative infinity, but the function is approaching a line. And if we have a slant asymptote, we will not have a horizontal. So it's one or the other, can't have both. So this was a lot of information, so we'll talk about how to find them in the next video.